Hey guys, absolutely awesome to have you here today. In this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between a weight shift, some misconceptions that people can have that can really destroy your game, versus a hip turn. There's kind of two different methodologies in golf. A lot of people will tell you we need to shift our weight to the right and then back to the left. And then a lot of people will say, no, we just need to keep it in the middle, keep everything very centered, turn back, turn through, and that way we eliminate the weight shift and some inconsistency. Well, in reality, both of those aren't quite right. And there's a couple of big traps that you can fall into if you buy into just one methodology versus another. But when you blend them both together, that's what the best players in the world are doing. And I got some great tips for you, some great tricks on how to get this exactly the way you wanna get it in your game. And then at the end, some awesome drills to take action. And it's great to know what to do, but we're gonna also talk about exactly how to do it. Let's go and get started. All right, if you're joining us from YouTube, be sure to subscribe by clicking the button down below. That way you're notified when we have all of our new content. I got some awesome videos that are really gonna help you guys with your golf game, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber on our YouTube channel. If you're, if you're on a mobile device, let's go ahead and click the drop down up there, and you'll be able to subscribe from that page also. All right, so first let's go from the weight shift methodology, and a lot of times, this is exactly correct. If you look at any pro golfer and you put, they, they have the nice uh, ability to use force plates these days. And if you look at force plates, which basically just reads where the pressure is in your feet, how much weight you have on each foot, how much pressure each foot is putting, every single, single pro golfer is gonna shift their weight to the right foot, put more pressure into the right foot on the backswing, then shift their weight to the left, put more pressure to their weight on the downswing on the left side. Every single player, there's not a player in the world that keeps their weight centered, it just doesn't happen. We have to be able to shift our weight to the right and then back to the left to get some good power. Same thing if you're throwing a baseball, I'm gonna shift my weight to the right, lift my left foot, and then I'm gonna go forward. If you're throwing a football, if you're throwing a javelin, if you're hitting a baseball, that's why it's, as you take that step, it's all on your right side. In almost any sport where you're trying to get power, that weight goes to your back foot and then transfers to the front foot. So that has to happen in reality. Now one of the misconceptions with this, what if we're thinking of the weight shift to the right and we hear people talk about constantly, get that weight to the right, and now all of a sudden, we think of that as just being straight linear this way, so straight going to the right, and a lot of times we'll slide. When you do that, your right hip gets way outside your right foot. So you can see how now, the middle of my right hip is outside of my right ankle, and I've really just slid this way. Now the problem with this is your eyes determine your hand-eye coordination. So if I start to slide to the right, watch what happens to my eyes. They slide to the right too. To counterbalance that, because we're all pretty good athletes, we say, okay, I can't get this and have my eyes slide, or I can't even hit the golf ball at all. So I'm gonna keep my eyes still, and I'm gonna slide, and now you get this reverse pivot. So one of those two things is happening. If I try to put that to the test, I can barely even swing doing that. I did the same, <laughs> I topped the ball, just cold topped it, hit it right in the water, lost my golf ball. But the problem with that is, as I slide, I just lose focus of where the ball is and there's almost no way for me to get enough hand-eye coordination to really hit that ball consistently. So when I look at my swing speed there, a whopping 89, 88.8 .8 miles an hour, it said it read when it carried, bounced off the ground and carried 30 something yards. It says it carried 35 yards on my flight scope. But obviously when I'm sliding around, number one, I can't get power. Because when I'm in this position, this is not a powerful position to hit from. And number two, as my eyes start to move, I lose focus where the ball is. So even for me personally, I could not break 100 if my eyes were shifting that far off the ball. I just wouldn't be able to time it up well enough. So let's go ahead and talk about what is the proper way to shift your weight to the right and then back to the left in the swing? And then we'll get to, this, to the rotation portion of this. So the proper way to do this, you're gonna have a weight shift to the right early in the backswing. So when I arm, my arm is about parallel to the ground, this is about as far to the right as I'm gonna shift. I'll feel some weight on the inside of my right leg. I'll see that my right femur is angled in though. And the first one I shifted, my upper leg got angled out that way. So my femur upper leg is this way, my hip is outside my ankle. If my hip stays inside my ankle, I've gotten that weight shift to the right. I feel like I'm gonna load up like I'm throwing a baseball. Or my favorite is, I feel like I'm loading up doing a shot put. I'm bending that right leg and then I'm gonna come on through. But the key there is, I have to keep that angled in. 
that's gonna allow me to rotate in place but still get that shift. If you can imagine 12 o'clock on a clock face, six o'clock being directly behind you, I'm gonna push out toward 130, which would be this direction. If my foot pushes out, that's gonna push this hip in the opposite direction. As that femur's angled out, now my leg is lined up in a way that I can actually make that happen. Another great way to visualize this is, imagine there's a person standing beside you, behind you at 730. He has a rope or a string tied to your hip pocket or your belt loop here, and he's gonna pull that as you shift your weight to the right. Now you're staying a little bit centered, you're not sliding off the ball, you're getting that weight shift and everything is angled in here. So my backswing, those are the keys. I'm feeling like I'm going to the right, but my leg is angled inward slightly. I'm pushing into the ground to get those hips to rotate as I'm doing that. Now we can turn around and do the same thing for a weight shift to the left. Before we get to the weight shift to the left, let's go ahead and rip one with the correct weight shift to the right. Last time I was 88 miles an hour and topped one in the water. I bet y'all do a little better than that with the proper weight shift. There we go, hit that one well. Right down the middle, maybe just a fraction off the toe, but that was hammered pretty good. Let's see what the flight scope says for me. Swing speed was 116.5. It didn't get the first one. Instead of 36 yard carry, I bumped it up to 297, so that's <laughs> quite a bit better. And that one rolled out pretty well, 347 total distance. So I got a nice bit of roll, hit that nice and solid. And that correct weight shift really helped me to get a lot more powerful. If I'm sliding and I'm in this position, there's just no way to be powerful. You know, you wouldn't feel like, oh, I could throw a baseball and do that. You gotta feel like you get loaded into that leg, then go forward. Same thing happens in the through swing. This is the cool thing about the golf swing. We talked about my right leg being angled in, pushing out toward 130 in the backswing. Same thing happens in the downswing. All I do is I shift my weight to the left. My left leg gets angled out to what would be 10.30 on the clock, 12 o'clock here, 10.30 is over there. My left leg's angled there. It has some bend in it. And then as I come on through, that straightens up and that pushes my hip back this way. Or you could imagine that same thing. There's a guy standing back here. He's got a string tied to my belt loop. And as I push into the ground, he's pulling that to clear it out of the way. And that gets me to rotate to the left. So my weight is shifting to the left, but it's not sliding. If I was to slide the incorrect way, so if I was to just go ahead and slide forward, never feel like, again, like linear. I'm imagining sliding to the right, sliding to the left, that would be weight shift right, weight shift left, the incorrect way. If I do that, now I have to get all hands and arms. You'll see my left hip is now outside my left ankle. My femur is angled the wrong way and now I can't rotate on through there and it's just a slide and an arm hit and I'm gonna lose a lot of distance as I'm doing that. I'll go ahead and try to do that out or try that out here. And I hit that one, I swung as hard as I could and I hit it really solid, went a little bit to the right, but I couldn't have hit it any better with that type of body motion. My last drive was 297 carry, that one went down to 250, 108 club head speed, 279 total distance. And a lot of times, we're actually better athletes than we realize we are. We actually can hit it another 20 or 30 yards farther Maybe you're the guy that's hitting at 270 that has the potential to hit at 340, but you just didn't have the right technique. You didn't get that leg turned out to where you can rotate on through there. So that's the problem with sliding either way. You're gonna cut out your distance. You're gonna cut out your consistency. You're gonna have to use more arms and hands to time it up, and you're really gonna struggle. Now the other end of this spectrum is, we talked about the right way to make the weight shift and the turn at the same time. What about the guys that say, okay, I'm gonna stay pretty centered here and I'm gonna rotate. So I'm gonna imagine almost like that string tied to your belt loop is directly behind you. I'm gonna rotate there and then in the downswing, I'm gonna rotate the other way and I'm gonna stay pretty centered over this golf ball. It sounds really cool. And the great thing about this type of swing is that now my eyes are fairly centered and I'm not gonna move around very much. Well, there's two problems with that. Number one, as we talked about before, every single pro player out there due to the, the we've, there's tons of force graphs on these force plates showing that they get their weight shift to the right and the weight shift to the left. 
Plus, it's just not gonna be very powerful. If I don't transfer my weight, now I don't have anything shifting to the left. I don't have anything to push against to rotate out of the way. I'm kind of just trying to slide on my own body weight. It's almost like if you're standing on, on, a, on a piece of ice, a frozen lake, and I'm trying to swing, well, by trying to stay still, very difficult to do that. I have to have some kind of weight shift to stay stable. If I try to hit one now, the idea of staying very centered, so I'm not gonna go to the right at all, I'm gonna stay here and then stay there, and I can try that out, I'm not gonna get as much power or distance. Now that looked like a good swing. I hit it right down the middle. Didn't hit it quite as solid as the ones before, but I lost a lot of distance because I couldn't load up and get power from the ground. I kind of had to feel like I was staying still as I was doing that. Now that wouldn't be bad. Most people would say that's a lot of speed. I swung 114, my total distance was 286. Most people would be very happy with that. But again, there's more in the tank. Maybe you're the guy hitting it 286 that could hit it over 300 yards if we got that proper weight shift. So now what do we do with this? It's great, Clay. We had this big, long video talking about the details of weight shift and turn and why we can't just turn or we can't just shift. Now, what do we do to actually get this in our game? And this is the point that's gonna separate the people that are gonna improve and get better from the players that are gonna fairly stay about the same. The players that are gonna improve are gonna put this to action. We're gonna do all the reps, we're gonna practice, and that's gonna get you those long-term results. So what I want you to do here, let's go ahead and set up Put a club across your shoulders, and for the first little bit here, we're just working on our body movements. As I go to the, the backswing, weight shifts to the right, but again, leg stays angled out. I feel like my weight's on the inside of my right foot. And then as I come down, my weight shifts to the left. My left leg is angled out. And then as I turn up, you'll see that my chest is nice and high. I've finished good and tall. My left leg is straight, and I've rotated all the way on through. I want you to do about 50 reps. Go back, left, and then through. Nice and slow, check your legs, check where your weight shift is going. If you have a mirror, a video camera, check yourself, make sure it looks like you're doing this, these moves correctly. Number two, another 50 reps. Let's go ahead and put this into a fluid swing. Same checkpoints here. Weight shifts to the right. Imagine that guy's pulling that rope this way as you shift to the right. That's gonna get you loaded up without sliding. Number two, let's have that same guy pull the rope this way. My left leg's angled out, and then I come all the way on through, so we're gonna make a fluid swing doing that. Nice and smooth, you don't have to go really hard doing this. Let's do another 50 reps. Once you're comfortable with those, let's take it to the driving range, and let's make sure that we do at least two practice swings before every full swing. Then go ahead and give it a real rip. All right, so for those of you joining us on YouTube, there's something I really want you to work on. In the Top Speed Golf system, these five moves of the system tie directly in with what we talked about here. One of the most important moves is what we call the straight line release. So we're getting this club to release in front of the golf ball. The golf ball just gets in the way. That left leg action is very important to that. Getting that left leg turned out, getting that to straighten, and I'm releasing in front is really crucial. That's your next step. After we learn the weight shift, now we have to learn what to do with the club to really tie it all together. So I've got a great preview of one of my best straight line release videos. Go ahead and click the card on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. You'll be well on your way to pairing that up with a straight line release and you can put that with your weight shift you worked on today. And man, your entire body and the club is gonna be working really well. You know, a common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson. 
releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.